Today, I'm going to show you how to use your own face in Stable Diffusion and create images with consistent faces. It used to be super complicated to do this, such as training your own models and Loras, and it ended up not being worth it for most people. But I'm going to show you an easy, free to use plugin for Stable Diffusion that allows you to upload a reference image and then transport that face onto your outputted image. So I'm going to walk through this plugin and show you everything you need to know. So let's get into it. Now before we hop into Stable Diffusion, we need to get a few prerequisites because we're using Roop and you need prereqs for that. So first, go ahead and download this Visual Studio community. I'll have this link down in the description below. Now once that has downloaded, go ahead and open it and then you're going to be presented with a list of things that you can tick on or off. So you're going to want to select the Python development, the desktop development with C++, and then the Visual Studio extension development. And then just go ahead and hit install and then you'll have to wait for that to load. And when that's done, you got one more thing to do. Go ahead and open up a command prompt terminal and then type in this command. I'll have it linked down in the description below and then go ahead and hit enter and then it should just install. And then when it's done installing, you can go ahead and close out of the window. Now with those prerequisites installed, go ahead and open up Stable Diffusion and then head over to extensions and then hit the available tab and then just hit load from. It should be auto filled with that query. And then in the search bar, go ahead and search for root. There should only be one option, so just go ahead and install that one. Now once it's done, go ahead and go back to the installed tab and hit check for updates and then apply and restart UI. And then once that is all done, you should see that you have root version 0.0.2 or, you know, if you're watching this later, maybe it's an updated version. Now once you've confirmed that you have root installed, go ahead and just fill out whatever settings and prompts you want because we're going to play around with it. So I'm going to open up this root tab and then you'll notice here that there is a place to drop your image in. Now the image that you upload right here will be the image of the face that you want to extract and then put onto the new output. So to start, I'm gonna use an image of Jim Carrey and this will just be our first test subject. Now we have to hit enable because this is what tells it that we want to use Roop and you can like disable it temporarily and then hide it if you want to use it uh, you know, without Roop and then just quickly enable it again if you wanted to go back to it. That's perfectly fine. And even without adjusting any of these settings, it should work perfectly fine. So I just have a prompt for like a man in a suit. So let's go ahead and generate that and see what it gives us. And there we go. We have our output and this looks pretty good. Now, at first you might be inclined to say, well, this didn't do a good job at all. You know, this is brown hair. He's not smiling. You know, it just doesn't look the same. And you know, that's true, but the point isn't to make it look the exact same. The point is to generate any image that you want and then be able to just take the outline of the face and put it on here. So if we want this character to be smiling, we have to indicate that we want him to be smiling. I didn't say whether or not I wanted him to smile or not. So it just, you know, generated a random image like it does. But all things considered, this did a great job because you can definitely see the resemblance between the two faces. And as another example, let's do Michael Scott, just so that way we can see that it is in fact doing the, you know, correct face. And there we go. This definitely, you know, looks like Michael Scott and you can see the resemblance there. Now this is all pretty cool and it works really well just straight out of the box, but there are a couple of other settings here that I do want to address. First, this restore face option is pretty necessary. You should be using either Codeformer or GFP GAN. Now, to me, they're very similar and, you know, the difference is pretty negligible. So I just prefer to use Codeformer, but here's an example of using none and then the two other options. So definitely use one of the two main options. Next thing I wanna talk about is this upscaler here. It'll show all of your other upscales if you use any from the extras tab, but this is just built in like any other upscaler. It'll just upscale the image. So, um, you know, you can use that if you want, and then you have your typical upscaler scale. I don't typically want to use this because I'd rather have it just do the base image and then upscale it after the fact. Um, but that is there if you'd like to use that. Now, finally, I saved the most complicated for last. We have this comma separated face numbers. Now, you might be like, what does this even mean? Well, if you have multiple people in your shot, 
you have to tell Roop which person you want the face to be applied to. Now it starts at zero and goes from left to right. So because there's only one face here, this guy is labeled as number zero. But I have a prompt uh, with two people, so let's go ahead and just generate a new one, and then I'll show you what this does. Now you'll see for this one, we got two different people, and it only applied the face to the leftmost one because it goes from left to right. But if we were to use this same seed, and change this zero to a one, then it's only going to apply to this face. And there we go, we can see the original face on this guy, and then it definitely tries to do its best job with uh, this side angle here. And it does, it's actually like not terrible, you know, it could have definitely been worse for like a full on side shot, but yeah, I think it does a great job. And then you could also do zero comma one, and then it'll apply the face to both. And there we go, we got both applied here. And here's another example just with basic settings with Ellen DeGeneres, and you can see it does a pretty good job. And you might be wondering, does it work on like cartoon characters? And as long as they look 3D and more realistic enough, it'll try to match it the best it can. Now, obviously the eyes are gonna be, you know, changed and not accurate, but you know, it, it copies the blush and then sort of the red lipstick and sort of just the face in general. So it does a pretty good job with, um, you know, things that aren't exactly like super realistic. Now, unfortunately, this does not work with like anime characters or drawn characters because Roop cannot detect a face here because it's, it's not realistic enough. Like with the cartoon 3D model, yeah, you know, it could make out a face and stuff, but with anime characters, it just really struggles to find a face. And unfortunately, that does mean that you can't use any like drawing based models. You have to use like realistic um, like face models because otherwise it just won't detect a face and it won't say, okay, there's no face here and no face here to attach to or vice versa because it doesn't, if it doesn't see a face in the output, then it won't know where to put the input face. Even if you do like a real person's face onto an anime character, it won't, it, it has to be able to detect two separate faces to match up. And if it's a drawn face, it just doesn't detect very well. And that also means we can't do it with Minecraft Steve either. So, uh, you know, I tried this earlier. Just, it just doesn't work, but fear not. I might have figured out a small little workaround that can help us a little bit in putting new faces onto drawn characters. So to do this, let's go to the image to image because Roop does work on image to image. Now I'm gonna go over to InPaint and this is where you're going to want to put like your, your main output image. So just as an example, let's use this image of Taylor Swift. And then down here on the Roop section, go ahead and enable that and drag in whatever image you'd like to use. Now this does have to be a realistic image because it's Roop and it's you know telling you where to put it. So let's try this image of Willy Wonka. Now you'll notice some new settings here, just leave them the same. And then I'm gonna just change this to resize by so that way it doesn't mess with the scaling or anything. And then I'm just gonna simply draw out and mask out the face that I want to change. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just make sure that you get enough out to where it can place enough and then it's as simple as just hitting generating and see what happens and there we go we have a Willy Wonka face and granted it's not like white and it doesn't match exactly but you know we've already explained why that happens uh onto this image of Taylor Swift so this will work with pretty much any combination of you know real faces and images to real people that you're wanting to put the face on but theoretically this would also work with anime characters now here's the catch it's going to be extremely cursed. So I'm gonna mask out this face and then we're gonna see what happens. I, Cause honestly, I have no idea. I have not tested this before and I don't think it's gonna look great. And just for safe measure, cause I don't know if it's gonna know to generate a face, I'm just gonna say generate a face. Um, so we'll see if that helps. And we'll keep this image of Willy Wonka, why not? And let's see what happens, jeez. Oh no. <laughs> and there we go. We have exactly what I was expecting. A very cursed image. Good luck sleeping tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna try it with Gargura just in case it happens to work, but in my testing earlier, it didn't work. So uh, don't get your hopes up. Okay, well that's interesting. So it did actually work a little bit with the blush. It identified the blush, but that was pretty much the only thing it changed. Um, So that's interesting. That didn't happen before, but um 
Yeah, I mean, it just because Roop only works with human faces, so it's not going to be able to transpose an anime girl face. So unfortunately, we still got a little bit to go on this technology for it to be seamless with drawings, but it does work really well with just, you know, real images. So yeah, you'll have to play around with this software. It's really cool and it's a really easy way to use your face in stable diffusion. I'm sure you'll be able to create really cool images, you know, with certain models and, you know, styles. So just go ahead and have some fun with it. And if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. And to discover more cool AI tools, check out our website at ai-search.io.